Hello, this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide in how to turn your Raspberry Pi 3 into a motion-detected security camera. First thing you'll need to do is round up the hardware you'll need for this project, and everything that you see pictured here I'll have links to in the show notes. But the first thing we'll need is a Raspberry Pi 3 itself, and the power source for that Raspberry Pi. Next we'll need a Raspberry Pi peripheral camera, and those are the ones here that you see with roughly a three-quarter inch white ribbon coming off of and metal tabs at the bottom. This particular model has LED lights but those aren't necessary. Next you'll need a micro SD card that's at least eight gigabytes big and then a micro SD card reader with a USB attachment. Not pictured here but also necessary will be a monitor of some sort that you can connect to a Raspberry Pi and the HDMI port whether that be in t a TV or an old computer monitor. You'll also need a USB keyboard and finally you'll need a computer to download all the software you'll need for this project. So that will be the next step. Now that we're all at our computers we're going to be downloading five pieces of free software to continue this process but before we do that I'm going to have you go ahead and put the micro SD card into the card reader and then put that card reader into your USB drive. Then open up your favorite browser, and then you're going to navigate to five different links that I'll put in the show notes to download the software we'll need. The first thing we'll need is SD card formatter. The icon looks like this. Then Win32 Disk Imager, Notepad++, and something called 7-Zip. Again, all four of those links will be in the show notes and the download and install process is very self-explanatory so I don't want to waste time um, walking through you through that process it should be fairly easy this next step though gets a little more complicated where we go to github.com to grab the motion iOS operating system to actually make the, the Raspberry Pi run like a security camera so what we're gonna do is go to this link again in the show notes and then about halfway down the page there will be files for a variety of different um, systems. We're going to look for Raspberry Pi 3. Go ahead and click that link and when you do you're going to download the operating system into the downloads folder. However, it will look like this here. It will have this long name with a .img.xz at the end. Go ahead and right click on that particular file name and you'll see 7-zip is an option now that you've downloaded and installed it. Then go to extract here. When you do that, in the same downloads folder, you'll now get the Motion iOS file with a slightly different name. It will have lost the .img.xz. Once we have this in our downloads folder, we can open up our SD card formatting software and that will look like this. This will be the dialog box that you'll see. You'll see a drop down menu that will have the USB ports um, and likely if you only have one micro SD card in your computer or one memory stick in your computer you'll only have one option. So you're going to select the option that has the, the, the drive with the U sorry the drive with the micro SD card in it you're gonna click overwrite format and you're gonna click format I'm not gonna do this because this is a different uh, SD card that I don't want to format but once you click this it's gonna just warn you that once you do this it's uh, irreversible deleting of anything that's on there so just click OK and then this uh, little bar will um, fill up with green as it it goes through its formatting process and it will let you know when it's successfully formatted the SD card. Once you've done that you can close that box and open up Win32 Disk Imager. You're gonna click this little file icon and then you should go to the downloads folder and grab the motion iOS software that doesn't have that .img.xc um, extension at the end. Once you click that, click open. The device should be the same 
port name or port letter as what you had in the SD card formatter software. You don't need to change anything here and click right. Again, I'm not going to do that because this is an SD card. I don't want to put this on. But once you do that, it's going to take a little while and it's going to say that it has successfully written to the SD card. Go ahead and leave your micro SD card in the port. Don't change anything. And go ahead and open up Notepad++. Now with your Notepad++ app open, I'm going to have you actually navigate back to a GitHub page that explains how to set up your Motion iOS to automatically boot up using your Wi-Fi. Instead of having you read through all of this, I'm just going to hit on the key points that will make this all work. Go to line number 10 and copy and paste the snippet of code that starts with the country and ends with this closed bracket. Once you have that, go ahead and paste that into your blank pad. If you live in the US, you can use the code as is. If not, you're going to have to go, or if you're not from the US, you're going to have to go back to the page, click on the link on step 11, and you'll go to a Wikipedia page where you can find what your country code is, and you'll overwrite where it says US with your two letter code. Then regardless of what country you're in, we all need to go down to SSID and between the two quotes without deleting them, put in the name of your Wi-Fi network exactly as you see it um, in your available networks tab on your computer. <clears throat> then on the PSK line between the quotes, you're going to put the password for that Wi-Fi network. With both of those steps complete, we're going to go to Edit, EOL Conversion, and switch to Unix LF. And lastly, we're going to go to File, Save As, navigate to your microSD card port. I put a blank one in just so that I had an option here, but once you've selected that, in your case, you'll see file names like um, boot code, loader, start kernel, command line, among others, in that um, in this section here. I, I mine's obviously blank, but you should see those if you're in the right um, USB drive. For file name, we're going to write WPA underscore supplicant dot conf. So that is WPA underscore S U P P L I C A N T dot C O N F, sorry, dot C O N F. And then the next step is very important as well. Instead of normal text file, scroll up to all types. Go ahead and click that, and then click save. I'm not going to save it to my blank SD. But once you have that, you can safely eject your um, card reader and take that micro SD card to your Raspberry Pi. We're back at the Raspberry Pi with our micro SD card and our camera attachment. And through the next few steps, please bear with me because I'm doing this to the viewfinder of my camera. But we're going to insert the micro SD card into the Pi. Flip it back over, and in the middle here, you'll see a little white piece of plastic that you can lift partially up. And what that does is it gives us a little space to slide our camera attachment. And we're going to find the side with the metal on it, and we're going to point that towards the HDMI input and slide it into the slot here as far as we can push it, and then pinch it in place by pressing the white tab back down. So you should have a connection strong enough that you can lift the pie up with that ribbon. And then go ahead and attach your power supply and your keyboard, mouse, and monitor. And we'll get started with the next step. I have everything plugged in now except for the power source. And unfortunately we're going to have to do a video of a screen which rarely works very well. But I'm going to go ahead and plug in 
the power source and hope for the best here. And when we do that, we see it booting up. And I can bring it closer here. It's running through its boot process. See, it just ran the WPA underscore supplicant, so we should be able to connect to Wi Fi. We're starting motion IO, and it's done. So it requests a login. Let me put this back down. Type in admin. And the password should be blank upon startup. And then we get this funky little character here. And what we want to do is just take note of... Oh, you can't see where the mouse is. You want to take note of this IP address here, ignoring what's after the slash. So in my case... The one I care about is 192.168.0.18. We're going to go ahead and do our computer, open up a browser, and type that in. I'm back at my laptop, and I have opened up the Firefox browser. I did that because as of the filming of this tutorial, September 2019, a lot of folks have been having issues uh, using Motion iOS with their Chrome browsers. So for the sake of the tutorial, go ahead and open up Firefox or some other non-Chrome browser and go to the address bar and type in the series of numbers from the earlier screen and hit enter. When we do this, it should bring up the Motion i user interface and if it's the first time bringing this up, it should ask you for your username and password, which is still at this point admin and then blank for password. You hit login. It might take a little while to boot up on your first time. And once this gets going, you should see a video here in the top left, I think, of what your camera is seeing. That's right here. Yep. So here we have my camera, which is pointing at this little doorway here. And there's no motion here or anything, anything going on in the video capture. But whenever you go here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a stream of what your camera sees. In terms of making it motion detect detection, you'll need to go into this little menu button here and go into, let me close some of these so you can see the options that you have. you're gonna get a lot of these different drop-down menus that you can select from and actually you may not have this at default you may have to go in here to general settings which is the second one down and go to let's see advanced settings this will be off by default so it's gonna limit what you can see so it doesn't have nearly as many drop-downs here Go ahead and go to general settings and click on. And first things first, you're probably going to want to go and change your username and password here. And then you get some options to like reboot the, the system if you want. Some network options. This shows you my Wi-Fi and then the password's hidden here. And then we get down here to some interesting options. The key one is motion detection. If we open this, we can change the sensitivity of our motion detection. 
and so we go ahead and change this and you can play around with this to whatever you think is relevant for your use case and then you can go to motion notifications and from here you can tell it what to do once it detects motions and records that video so in this case you can send an email that's what I've done in the past and you can just follow these um, prompts to get your motion detection um, files sent to your email and before you do it you can hit test email I'm not going to go through all these steps because there's a variety of differences that need to occur depending on which um, email client you're using I can do a follow-up tutorial on this actually if a lot of people have questions just go ahead and put it in the comments but this is how you'll set that up you can also save files of motion detection by using this file storage. This can get a little more complicated, complicated depending on which upload service you use. So you can do FTP servers, um, Google Drive, or Dropbox. And again, just for the sake of this tutorial, I just wanted to get the motion detection camera up and running, which we did. This is a whole nother tutorial in and of itself. So if you guys have questions, feel free to post it in the comment. Uh, comment section below and I can do tutorials on these specific um, updates or any other questions that you have about these menus um, in the next tutorials just a forewarning <laughs> depending on where you're gonna put this if there's a ton of motion or a lot of lights going on and off you're really gonna wanna play with this so that you're not just completely inundated with emails that's what I did when I uh, turned mine on. I, I wanted to be as sensitive to every motion as possible, and I ended up just getting a tremendous amount of emails in my Google Drive account and filled up really quickly. So just play around with the sensitivity settings depending on where you're going to be pointing the camera. But that pretty much concludes the setting up of Motion iOS on your Raspberry Pi. Thanks a lot for watching, and please subscribe.